Cal AI lets you track your calories by taking a photo of your food. Unfortunately, they want to charge $13 a month for this. What if I told you you can build your own personal Cal AI for pennies and better yet, without any coding? In partnership with Zapier, I present to you a plan to get this done. First, the user will take a photo from the app or upload a photo from their photo library. And we're going to get this built without any coding using cursor. Then the app is going to upload the photo to a URL called a webhook. We'll use Zapier to create this webhook and automatically send that photo over to OpenAI to analyze it and to estimate the calories. And we're going to do all of this visually without any coding. Let's jump in. All right, let's get started by creating our webhook URL first. And that is so that when we get to building the app, we actually have a URL to upload the photo to. That's pretty important, wouldn't you say? So to get started in the upper right hand corner, click on the link to get to this page or in the description below the video, you'll also find the link. You're going to click on these two buttons to sign up for a new account or on the upper right hand corner. Now, once you follow the steps and you create your account, you're going to get to your dashboard, which looks like this. Now, actually, yours might not look quite like this because I I've been using Zapier for a long time and you can see all these apps being run. I use it to run code with Chris and I wanted to show you this actually on my billing page. I've been using it since 2018, paying for it with my own money and that's not even the last page. So Zapier allows you to just in, if you've never heard of it before, allows you to automate a lot of tasks especially between different platforms and between different apps without having to code it all yourself and that really helps when you're trying to build a new business or set up a new app so for example when someone uh, signs up for cwc plus a lot of automations happen gets the person gets added to the email list they get added to the learning platform they get given access in the student forum and things like that all of that happens through zapier for code with chris anyways we are going to get our webhook URL. So in the upper left hand corner, you're going to click this orange button to create a new zap. So in simple terms, what a zap is, it's just an automated workflow. So it's got a trigger. So when do you want this automation to occur? And then all of the steps after that in the workflow, like what do you want to do with that data? So in the earlier example, the trigger would be someone enrolling in CWC plus my training program and then all the steps following that in the automation you can see here I have plus four and then this is the last step this is the email software I have five different things that happen after that trigger what we're going to want to do with our Cal AI like app is that we're going to click create click the sap and let's define that trigger actually they've made it really easy that you can use AI to just describe the trigger and the workflow but we're going to customize it manually so that you know um, how to do this yourself okay select the event that starts your zap so what we want to do is use what's called a webhook and this is going to give you a url that you can send a request to from your ios app that is going to start this automation so let's configure this step you can get a visual representation of the workflow here. Let's configure that step. Let's choose the trigger event to be catch hook. This triggers when a post put or get request is made to this Zapier URL. And then we're going to click continue. We're going to disregard that. We don't need that. And that's it. We have our URL. Here it is. I'm going to hit copy and let's just paste it into the URL bar so you can see it. So that if you send a request from your app to this, including any data that you want to pass through, it is going to start off this automation. And using the data that you sent to that URL, you can then perform actions. So you can see where this is going, right? And that's it. You've got your webhook URL. Now we're going to leave this page open because what we're going to do now is go over to building the app. We're going to send some data to this URL so that then we have that sample data to work with as we're building our automation. And that's going to make it a lot easier for us to build this workflow if we have some sample data to work with. So again, leave this page open, but hit copy on this URL. All right, now we jump into Xcode and we start our iOS project. If you have no idea what Xcode is, don't worry, I've got you covered in the description below. I've linked to my Xcode tutorial where I walk you through where to get it and what it does and how to use it, all of that stuff. So we're gonna assume that you know how to use it and we're gonna jump right in. We're gonna create a brand new project and you can choose iOS and choose app. 
and then we are going to we'll call it how about cal ai demo even though it's not exactly cal ai but it's going to be pretty cool so everything else you can leave as is interface is swift ui language is swift and then i'm just going to save it on the desktop you don't need any source control for this this is a quick demo and that is it so we have a basic xcode project that doesn't do anything we're not actually going to code it inside xcode we're going to jump into cursor now and we're going to tell ai to just build this app for us all right step three we are in cursor now and if you don't know what cursor is don't worry again i've got you covered in the description below this video i'll link to my guide on setting up and using cursor but essentially it is using ai to build your app now what we're going to do is open up the xcode project that we just created so we're going to go open project and we're going to browse for it on the desktop where i saved it you're going to want to highlight this folder and just hit open all right now it sees all of those xcode project files and then over on the right hand side this is where we are going to tell the ai we're going to write a prompt for it to build the app now i have the prompt here so i'm going to copy and paste it and then i'm going to describe to you what it is that we're building so I am telling the AI to build a screen where the user can either take a photo with their camera or to choose a photo from their photo library. There's also going to be a text box where the user can describe or add additional context to what the food is in the photo just to help the AI out for sizing and things like that. And then the user has a button that they can hit to upload the photo to our webhook URL. Now this is where we're going to want to go back to Zapier and we're going to want to copy that URL and then we're going to want to come here and paste it in because I am telling the AI to send the request like the photo data, the text data to this webhook. And then what I'm going to do is just hit um, go or send and it's going to think it's going to do its thing. And then all we're going to do is hit accept. All right. It's generating all the files. It's telling us what it's going to do still going and there's going to be two things that we need to add to the xcode project because uh, cursor can't do it for us so first of all i'm going to hit accept all uh, to accept all these changes and then we are going to have to go back to xcode in the info.plist and add these two keys which describes why we need access to the device's camera and also to the user's photo library and xcode is going to use that information to do the pop-up to ask the U4 permission. So here I have my Xcode. We're going to go to the info.plist and we're going to add this first key. Okay, so let's type it in NS camera usage description. And we're going to want to just say this um, to take a photo of your food. And then we're going to add an additional key here. And we're going to, this is NS photo library usage description. And this is going to be to, uh, to upload a photo of your meal. All right, and with that, we can basically run our Xcode project from here. And we're gonna see what we get. So here's the simulator. What we're going to do is choose a photo from the photo library. And I added this steak and fries photo prior. So I'm going to choose that. And then what we're going to do is add some context. Just the steak is eight ounces. It's just so that it's easier for the AI to detect. All right. And that should be good. All right. So now let's go over to uh, the Zapier side and let's see if we can see the data come through. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this trigger, hit test, and we're going to see if this is anything that they pulled through. Yeah, so this is the data. This is exactly the context that I wrote, right? Steak is eight ounces. And here's the image data itself. Now we are going to test with the sample data. So we're going to continue with the selected record. And basically, it's going to send that test data to the next step. 
Now, what do we want the next step to be? It is going to be analyzing the photo. Now, what is it that we're going to want to do with the data that we sent? We're going to want to analyze it and see how many calories that steak meal is, right? And we're going to use OpenAI for that. So right here, let's click on the action. And there are thousands of apps. You can see here 7,000 plus apps. And you don't have to worry about how these apps talk to each other. You just have to add the step and then pass the data from one step to the next. Click on drop downs and things like that to configure it all. I'll show you that right now. So we're going to want to use OpenAI to do this. Click on OpenAI. We are going to choose Analyze Image Content with Vision. So upload an image and send a message or question about it. We're going to hit Continue. And here we get to configure, OK, well, what's the image and what's the message? So the image, if I hit forward slash, I can specify that the image data should come from the previous step. This catch hook in webhooks by Zapier, that's this step right here. If I had additional steps prior to this open AI step, I would see them all here. And I can use that data in these fields. So let's choose this and I'm going to choose the image. And that's basically taking the image from here, which my iOS app sent to this trigger, and then it's going to pass it to open AI. So for the message, I want to ask, I have this copied here. Let me just paste it here. I want to ask the AI, how many calories do you estimate this food is? Structure the response as a single number with no additional text because I want to use the output to log somewhere else, right? Some additional context for the photo, colon, and then I'm going to pass through the context which the user typed in into that text box. So once again, hit forward slash and I can use the data, the test data from the prior steps. Context stick is eight ounces. That's what I'm going to put there. Let's continue and test this step. Hit continue. You can skip the test if you don't want to, but we definitely want to. So let's hit test step. It's going to send the image and the prompt to OpenAI and let's see what we get back. All right, image analysis gives us 1100 calories. Yeah, I would say that's pretty accurate. So we can go ahead and publish this right now, but we're not quite done because what do we do? What's, what's the end result? We have an answer from the open AI, but we definitely want to log that somewhere, right? So I don't know about you, but I run my life on spreadsheets. Like Google Sheets is just such an easy tool to plan trips with. I track everything in the business, like newsletter open rates, abandoned carts, and all these different tools and stuff like that. And then on the personal side, I track my keyboard collection, how much money I've spent on keyboards, my gym equipment, my gaming, and like even my life stuff. So that is why I have started a calorie tracker spreadsheet, and we're going to put the data in here. So here's a pretty cool thing. We're going to add another step and we're going to add the Google Sheets step. And I am going to look for that spreadsheet. So what do we want to do? We want to log that data into a spreadsheet, right? So I'm going to hit add. There's all sorts of different things you can do. You can update data, you can delete data. So I'm going to create one or more rows in a specific spreadsheet. I'm going to hit continue. Now I get to customize where that spreadsheet is. So I showed you the calorie tracker, right? That's this one right here. I have all the different ones here. You can even specify the actual sheet. So in that workbook, there are two sheets, one for the data and one for the, um, the actual calories for today. And I'll show you the formula for this in a second. You can just keep logging data and it'll calculate it. So I want to log it into the data sheet. And here's what we put. OK, so we're going to put the calories and again, we're going to take the data from the previous step. So I'm going to do forward slash and from the open AI step, I am going to choose the output image analysis for the date. It's going to be something like this. Now, Zapier has a, a short code that you can put into here for today's date or the current date and time. So I Googled that short code because I can never remember it. And this is how you add a timestamp. It's just the short code right here and we can put it into here. All right. And then we're going to hit continue and we're going to test the step. It's going to insert that data into here. So it's running and there we go. It just did. So that's this one right here. Yep. So if I took the, 
uh, look at the dashboard, today's calorie, I still see zero. And that's kind of a problem. Let's take a look at what the formula is doing. So there is a summation going on. The, the data range is column A from um, A2 and beyond. So that's this, it's looking at the dates, right? And it's saying that if it is today, like if, if that date range is within today, then take the value on column B. So this one should be firing. It's March 15th when I'm recording this and it should be uh, taking this number and putting it here, but for some reason it's not. And I suspect, well, I know because the timestamp has the time on it and somehow this formula is not smart enough to uh, take the time into consideration. It's just looking at the dates, right? So these dates that I know worked because I tested this before, it doesn't have the time. So what can we do? Well, here's another thing I can show you with Zapier is we can add a step before the sheets to format the date into the specific format that we want. We'll insert what's called a formatter and we are going to work with date and time. We're gonna hit continue and we're gonna transform, do date formatting. And the input is just going to be that Zapier timestamp to whatever format we want. So if we just do a little search here, um, I want, sorry, I want this. I want month, day, and year. So that's this format. Time zone from format. Okay, so this should be good. And then let's go ahead and test this. All right, so the date, the data in doesn't show me what the data in was right here, but the data out is the output that I want, right? So I'm gonna hit continue. And now in this spreadsheet configuration, I no longer gonna use the timestamp. I can hit forward slash and I can use the output from the formatter step. So I'm gonna use the output from there, which gives me the date in the format that I need. I'm gonna hit continue. So let's retest this step. I'm gonna retest it. We're gonna go back here, watch that row up here. And there it is and this time, this is the row, right? It doesn't have the time associated with the timestamp. And if we go back, we'll see that it did in fact do uh, that logging. So if I change this number, we can just verify that it works. Yep, it's 400. And then if we log more food, this is just gonna tally up. So let's look at what we have. We have an iOS app now that you can build and deploy on your own phone. And at any time you can launch the app, you can take a photo of your food or you can choose a photo of a previous meal, add some context, hit submit, and just be done with it. Okay, and that makes logging food so much easier. This isn't something that you're going to deploy to the app store, but for automating your calorie tracking, it is amazing. Not to mention a lot cheaper than using Cali AI and signing up for their subscription plans, right? Now I have an idea to expand this app to be a personal assistant to automate other parts of your life. For instance, budgeting. What if you could take a photo of your receipts and just send it to AI? It's going to detect all of the uh, categories and the amounts and then output it into a spreadsheet where you're tracking your budget and your spending for the month, something like that. Or another one might be uh, voice memos that automatically get transcribed or sent somewhere, logged into your Notion or something like that. So if you want to see me expand this app and build out more features for it, I need you to help me with two things. Number one is to click on that link in the description below the video so that Zapier can feel the love from you guys and they will want to partner with us again. And number two is to comment below with what automation you want to see me build for this personal life assistant app. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope that was fun for you. It was fun for me to build and I'll see you in the next video.